Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the discussion settings of your WordPress site. As far as the default WordPress settings pages go, the discussion settings are the most intensive, meaning there are the most of them. So let's go check them out. Here we are in the dashboard. To get to the discussion settings, all you have to do is hover over settings on the left hand side, click on discussion, which is quite often the fourth one down. On the next page that loads, you see all the default settings. If you haven't played around with these settings yet, this is probably pretty much how they'll look because these are default. I don't play around with them rarely ever. So we'll go through them one by one and we'll talk about what they do and what they're for. So the very first settings we'll deal with are the default article settings. And the first option is attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article. What this means is if you publish a post that has a link in it, your WordPress site will try to identify whether the other site is a WordPress site. It will try to send a ping back or a track back to that site. And if that webmaster is allowing ping backs and track backs, then it will appear down in the comments section as a ping back or a track back. And the very next option that you have is to allow those to appear on your site or not. So if somebody else publishes an article that links to your post, it will then, if you allow it, it will create a link in the comments section back to the original post author. So it's like the two sites are talking to each other almost. The benefit is, of course, that if that link is published, it's a backlink to the other site, which is good for their SEO, but it's also good for community building. And really, if you don't have pingbacks or trackbacks allowed, you're never even going to know that somebody publishes your content unless you're actively searching for it or unless you're using Google Alerts. So it's actually a great way to discover other people in your market or people who enjoy your content. And the next option is allow people to post comments on new articles. Self-explanatory, if you uncheck this box and you save the page, there will not be a comment box below the article. And as it says down here, whatever you choose here is just the default setting. These settings can be overridden as you're writing the article by using the screen options on the, the, the post creation page. Next we have other comment settings. So let's go through them one by one. The first one, comment author must fill out name or email, self-explanatory. At the top of every comment box, there is a name, email address, and an optional website URL field. And those will be gone if you uncheck this box. It'll just be comment and that's it. Next one, users must be registered and logged in to comment. And what that means is they actually have to have an account with your site, which you can set up in the general settings. I'll show you that right now, actually. If you go to general settings on the left-hand side, and if you scroll down a little bit, there's an option called membership. If this is on, you can allow anyone to register. And when they register, the next option, assigns them the user role they have when they register and I would not recommend giving anybody higher than a subscriber because these are going to be random people you don't want to give them admin access so you just want to allow them to register as a subscriber and then save the page and what this will allow in combination with if we go back to the discussion page in combination with having this checkbox checked the users have to sign in in order to comment and this will greatly reduce the number of spam comments you have, although you will have spam accounts created so that spammers can still post scam, spam comments, but it'll be reduced. So the next option is automatically close comments and articles older than 14 days. It might sound counterintuitive because why not have people comment all the time? Well, what actually happens is if you have an active following, they will comment and they'll discuss your article in the days following the publishing of the article. And you'll be able to watch your, your discussion and see when it usually tapers off, but it tapers off rather quickly. And 14 days is a pretty good time frame. Sometimes 30 days is a good one too. Really just depends on your audience. But if the comments are open for longer than that, what you'll end up getting is a whole lot of spam comments. Because the spam bots, they don't care when it was published. All they're trying to do is get a backlink. So they will be posting spam comments to those old blog posts. So you have to go and clean all those. 
So that's why there is this setting to automatically close comments after a certain number of days, that certain number of days being when your natural discussion from your followers starts tapering off. Next option, enable threaded or nested comments. And you can choose how many levels deep you want to go. And basically what that means is you can reply to a comment. So if, if someone leaves a comment, you can then reply to it and that's, that's one nest. And then somebody can reply to your comment and that's a second nest. And those will be indented. So you can have up to five levels deep by default or you can choose 10 levels. Although the, the, more, the deeper you go, the more complicated your comments get and the more squished they'll be because there is an indent for every nest. So I would, wouldn't recommend going very deep on these. I think five even is too much. I go three deep for the nested comments. Or you can just turn them off completely and everybody has to comment in line, no threaded or nested comments. So the next option is break comments into pages. By default, you have 50 on here. And, and the reason you want to break comments into pages is because each comment requires a request to the database. So the more comments you have on the page, the more requests the database have to be done and the slower the page will load. So if you have thousands of comments, that page load time will be substantially slower than if you would break comments into multiple pages and just load them in sections. Because, be, because not everybody Let's be honest, not everybody's going to want to read all the comments. So they're just going to want to read your article, but still they'll be loading all of the comments, putting all that burden in your database when it might not even be required. So if you get a lot of comments, I recommend you use this option to limit the number of comments that are loaded per page. And then you're able to also select whether the last comments are first, meaning is chronological order, or whether the first comments are first, meaning it's Whoever commented the very first time is at the very top of the comments. And then the further, on the same option, the comments should be displayed with the older or newer comments at the top of the page. Again, that's chronological or reverse chronological. Just depends on uh, your preference, really. And the next option is email me whenever, first, anyone posts a comment, and second, a comment is held for moderation. The first one self-explanatory, a comment held for moderation means that somebody has to go in and approve or disapprove the comment. And generally when you're first starting out, I recommend you do that because a lot of spam comments come in at the beginning. So that allows you to weed them out before they actually publish to your site. Next option, before a comment appears, first the comment must be manually approved and second, the comment author, author must have a previously approved comment. So those two options are also kind of self-explanatory. When someone posts a comment, if you check this box, somebody has to approve it before it's posted to the site. And the second box kind of make, makes your job a little easier. So if you have somebody who comments frequently, then you can say, if this person has an approved comment, they can comment again and again and again and hope they don't one day start being nasty on your website at which point if they do you can just delete that comment so it's not a big deal but this is cuts down on your work because that approved commenter doesn't need to be moderated every time the next section comment moderation section if you don't have this box checked comment must be manually approved then the comment moderation options here will come into effect so the first one is hold a comment in the queue if it contains two or more links Two or more links is usually suspect. Sometimes it's legitimate, but quite often it's a spammer. So just to be safe, that comment goes into moderation first. It has to be manually approved. And then you can also add in this box down here, you can add certain words, names, URLs, emails, or IPs. And if those are associated with the comment, then those are held for moderation as well for you to review before they're put on the site. The next option is comment blacklist. So if, you, if the comment has certain words, or the same as the same as last one actually, if it has certain content, names, URLs, emails, or IPs, it will automatically be marked as spam. So you can put all kinds of words in here, swear words, um, words that you don't want posted on your site, or that are usually associated with people who are saying nasty things. 
You can put all those words in here, and if those appear in the comment, it's automatically blacklisted, and you never even see it. So this is actually a very handy feature that a lot of comment blocking plugins tap into. The, the comment blocking plugins basically duplicate this feature. So you can use the one that's built right in the WordPress, and you can save yourself a whole lot of spam comment moderation just by using this feature, which is in here by default. And next we have avatars. Avatars are a lot of fun. They make your comments more interesting because they put a little icon, usually someone's headshot, a little thumbnail of their headshot beside the comment. You can choose to display them or not. You can even choose which rating the avatar must be to be allowed to on your site. And then if someone doesn't have an avatar, there's a website called gravatar.com where you can actually create a WordPress avatar and it, it follows you around. So whenever you leave a comment with, a, with that specific email address that you signed up with at Gravatar, it automatically puts in your thumbnail. So for people who don't have that, you can have a default avatar and you can pick any one of these you can also get plugins that expand this list. You can actually make your own as well. But by default, these are the options you have, and usually that, that's enough. Most people do have Gravatars. If they, if they comment a lot, they, they have an avatar that shows up. So often just a mystery person is just enough, the default setting. And then after setting all that up, when you're happy with what you have set up, all you have to do is click Changes at the very bottom of the page. Those changes take effect and you're ready to rock and roll. So in this video, we went over the discussion settings in your WordPress site. I hope this video helped you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel, check out our social media, and take a look at wplearninglab.com where we write WordPress tutorials every single day. Talk to you soon.